Hello Canadian gardeners, cool climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you are new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist and on this channel we take that as science and we apply it to gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and join this awesome community. There's no such thing as a stupid question, so be sure to drop those down below. And the reason there's no stupid questions and plant care or gardening is because everyone's situation is different and what may work for me will not necessarily work for you and vice versa. Plant and gardening is a dialogue between people and that is the way I like to keep it. There's no such thing as an expert in my mind, regardless of how much experience or education you have, everyone is a professional in their own right. So we are out at the lake and Bob is fishing in the foreground, but YouTube calls. So we're out here doing a video for you and I will be inserting shots along the way of exactly what I'm talking about and referencing my tomato garden and kind of what's going on there. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to prune, prune tomatoes for maximum yield. And you've probably watched a million different videos on this and read a hundred different articles. But today I'm going to give you a totally different view on pruning tomatoes and whether or not it's worth it. But we are going to put a cold climate Canadian spin on it. If you have a reduced growing season and you're not totally sure if you should be trimming or should not be trimming, then this is the video for you. In this video, we're gonna be going over why you should or should not prune and why it depends on the type of plant. And I'm not talking about determinant or indeterminant, determinant, oh, indeterm, okay. Determinant or indeterminant plants. It has to actually do with the variety you're growing and exactly how big of a fruit you are aiming for. Bet you've never heard that before. That's why I'm here. The theory is that pruning will give you a higher yield and this is completely false. I don't actually know where the whole idea that higher yields are come from pruning of tomatoes, um, but it's simply incorrect. And before you hop on me about it, let's talk about why it's incorrect. For every time there is a sucker or more growth from any angle of the plant, you are gaining biomass and eventually that biomass will yield a new string of flowers and therefore more fruit. So every sucker has the potential to have flower stems and every length of the main stem also has the potential to have more blooms on it. A great example is if you've never trimmed up your cherry tomatoes, you are gonna have a higher yield more so than if you were to trim your cherry tomatoes. But what they don't tell you is that you will have a lot of flowers with unripened small tomatoes. If you are aiming for the big beefsteak tomatoes, then trimming and pruning is what you need to do. However, if you are not aiming for that and you just want tomatoes whenever they come, because you live in a slightly warmer climate or you have access to bringing the pot inside before frost hits, then you don't have to trim your tomatoes. That is completely false. What pruning does is it actually helps the plant focus on what needs to happen with what's already existing. So when you prune foliage off, you prune suckers off, less of the focus is on the suckers and more biomass and hopefully more seeds and plants or more fruits and seeds and the focus is on what exists already which is the flowers and the fruits. Pruning simply focuses the plant's energy. Why do we know this? Well we can go back to the origins of tomatoes and tomatoes were never meant to be these fleshy beastly juicy fruits. They actually originated in South America, Chile, Ecuador, those type, sorts of areas and they were the size of a blueberry. A blueberry. <laughs> yes, the size of a blueberry with very little water, very little flesh, and a ton of seeds in it, which makes sense because that's what the tomato was engineered for, was for spreading seeds. But through our hybridization and just human intervention, we developed these big, juicy, delicious monsters of fruits. But because of that, the tomato plant isn't necessarily engineered to making them perfectly round and big without more human intervention, which is in the form of pruning and focusing the energy on 
developing that big fruit. So if you just want more fruit and small fruit, in the case of a cher cherry tomato, do not prune. If you want the big sandwich size beef steaks, then consider pruning. So the type of pruning you do is actually what's going to dictate the response the plant has and exactly what it does with the stimuli you've given it. So there are many modalities for pruning. I'm going to go over my favorites and exactly what I like to do and why I do them, but there are many different versions of what you can do. This is geared again towards cold climate and Canadian gardeners. And the reason being is this is going to ensure you get the big beefsteak tomatoes, maybe not an enormous quantity of them, which again, if you want the enormous quantity, you just won't prune but um, to ensure you get them before frost. So the first one is actually a term that's used in cannabis growing and it's called lollipopping. And essentially what you're doing is you're making the plant look like a lollipop. And there's quite a few different reasons for this. You're going to trim off all the foliage that starts below the first stem of flowers. And the main objective here is obviously to decrease the risk of disease, but also those lower foliage typically don't get as much sunlight, therefore aren't contributing as much to photosynthesis. And conversely, probably more of a burden in an energy sink more than an energy store. So that is a really good reason to get rid of them. It just helps again, redirect the, null, the power that is being made during the day to the flowers. But again, do not lollipop your tomato plant until the first stem of flowers come off because then you kind of know and can gauge where to cut it from. The second modality, which is very obvious and has been spoken about by many different YouTubers across the platform, and that is just simply the sucker removal. So that is the removal between the main stem and a projecting outward leaf. The reason for that is that sucker is going to eventually have more flowers and more leaves, and it's going to unfocus the plant away from developing the ones on the main stem into just bushier and bigger plants which again makes it it makes it not as easy to control and deal with in regards to watering and just plant care but again you're just not focusing the plant you just want to redirect the focus back to that main shoot so just pluck it off now if you've let things go and it's starting to look about the same size as the actual stem itself just leave it you're going to do more harm than you are going to do good so just leave a sucker there it'll be fine just remember it for next time and continue ripping your suckers off going upwards and the last one which people don't typically talk about but i feel like it's because there's no channels or forums dedicated to canadian gardening and that is topping of your tomato plants so once you're starting to notice frost is setting in, you're probably not gonna get any more flowers, you're gonna risk potentially losing the fruit that's already there and it's still not ripe, you may wanna consider topping your plant, which means just snipping off the top portion of your tomato plant. What this is going to do is it's going to stop the focus on new foliage and new flowers going upwards, something similar to what we did with the suckers. And it's just going to redirect all our energy to those flowers and ripening the flowers that already exist and ripening the fruit that is already on the stem. So if you're running short on time and frost is coming and you still don't have ripe tomatoes, lop off the top of it and you will have success in a very short period of time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and more of the science behind pruning and the different forms of pruning and what they do. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you trim your plants. I know learn to grow. Masilla, she does not prune her cherry tomatoes. I prune mine. And the reason being is I have mine in hanging baskets and I'm pretty sure literally rip off of the hang like off the shepherd hooks it's on because it is so freaking heavy so i do prune my cherry tomatoes not because i want to but just because of how they're planted if they were in the ground i wouldn't prune my cherry tomatoes because i'm already starting to get fruit they'll be ripe within the next week or two and then i will just continue to harvest off of it for the rest of the summer i'm not aiming for big and luscious i just literally want a cherry sized tomato so cherry tomato i do not recommend trimming on you will lose yield i can guarantee you that and you are going to lose yield with the beef steaks and everything else but if you are aiming for a large tomato then pruning is what you need to do if you are just going for mass and pure just volume of tomato physicality then 
consider not pruning, especially if you have the growing season to do so. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.